This video will cover the basic use and understanding of the MP, QB8000, and 800 Spectrum Analyzer feature, and to determine when to use the Spectrum Analyzer by examining the CRC, PHI errors, and warp-related errors. The Spectrum Analyzer helps to analyze the ARF environment so the best available channel can be selected. However, please note that this tool is limited and is not a direct substitution for professional deployment with dedicated spectrum analyzer. Now, this feature is available only on firmware version 250 and above for the QB-MP8000 series and the QB-MP800 series. This feature is not supported by the MP8150 CPE and the QB8150 LNK12-50 units. First, we're going to cover when to use the Spectrum Analyzer. All right, for that, we're going to look at some of the statistics that are provided by the radio. Uh, CRC, PHI errors, and then some of the warp statistics. So we're going to start along with the CRC and PHI errors. To get there, click on Monitor, Interface, and then Wireless 1. Scroll down, and you'll see your CRC and PHIs. Now, the CRCs indicate you have adjacent channel interference. PHI errors are co-channel interference. Right? So the easiest way to determine if you actually do have interference is when you do a refresh and you want to do this about every three second interval, four, maybe three times, four times, what we're looking at is the CRCs. Now you should never have a CRC error. Now if you are, if it goes up higher than five to six every refresh rate, you have interference. That means your packets are corrupt. The CRCs are, uh, are failed and this piece kicking in. Okay? Now, the PHI errors, about 80 every refresh rate in the case that you have interference. Now, in my case, when you look at it, I hit refresh, everything is fine in my case. But if these numbers are going up, it's a clear indication that you have interference and the Spectrum Analyzer is a good tool for that. We're next going to cover the warp general statistics. Warp statistics are used to keep track of the warp protocol's health. Warp by itself is a protein protocol. Because of this, it requires an ACK. If an ACK is not received, then TCPAP kicks in and starts to retransmit the frames again. And now we're going to go ahead and follow some of these warp statistics that are going to tell us what is happening and if the interference is in play. Now, at my end, when I click refresh, I'm going to have nothing here but some of these major ones are going to be the poll no replies. Okay? This indicates the number of packets or messages from the warp which are not acknowledged within the time period which is three seconds only monitored by the BSU. We do not want to see this go up at all. We're going to have send retries. Successfully send data packets which are retried once. Then we have the failures, the send failures, data packets that are not acknowledged, that are retried or timed out and are dropped eventually. Then we have the received failures down here. This is out of order packets, which will be dropped. Data packets whose sequence number is more than one is the last received data packet. So if it dropped, it's going to come in out of order. It means it's failed, and then once again, it's going to start all over again. Right? Then we have the receive retries up here. This is the receive more than twice packets since the ACK is lost, and TX sends again. So once again, any one of these in an increment is going to indicate that you have interference. So if when you use this in conjunction with the CRC and PHI errors is going to give you a pretty good indication that your link is experiencing interference and the spectrum analyzer is going to have to be used to determine what's happened on your particular channel. So we're going to use channel 64 as an example at a 20 megahertz bandwidth. So as you can see here, it kind of breaks it down by 11, 20, and 30 megahertz and by power 20 dB, 28, and 40. So as per the standard, at 11 megahertz from the center's frequency, which is channel 64 in that case, the power should be reduced by 20 dB. Okay? At 20 megahertz, which is out here, the power should be reduced by 28 dB. And from 30 megahertz, which is all the way out here, 
it's going to be reduced by 40 dB. So as you kind of see, the mask will actually take about five channels in either direction. So when you kind of look at it, and I'll show an example later, uh, how to read the spectrum analyzer to indicate that you actually don't have interference because you can kind of see it steps down. It will go down about 30 to 35 megahertz on either side, and that is normal. The transmit mask is limited by 40 dB or 45 dB for 11N radios at 30 megahertz from the center frequency which is all the way out here. This rule applies to all 802.11 radios which use OFDM signal. Therefore, the actual spectrum will have sidebands of up to 30 megahertz, as mentioned before, going from here to here from either side of the second center frequency, which once again in our case is channel 64. And the power level of those sidebands depend on the power level of the center frequency. Now there's a note, tsunami radios can understand only 802.11 signal and treat all other signal as errors. The tsunami spectrum analyzer scans each channel at 5 MHz bandwidth and plots all 802.11 and non-802.11 signals, including errors. The results are plotted based on the power of the received signal and the activity count for that channel. So what does this all mean? So once again, we are using channel 64, and you can see how it kind of steps down once again, 30 megahertz on either side. So if you see here, this is an actual scan for channel 64, and we're going to cover how to access the spectrum analyzer itself. But as you can see, this is the way it should look like. It should step down gradually as it does here. This indicates that there is no interference on channel 64 or any of the other channels because it's actually just reading its own mask. Okay, so if you go this way, it should step that. Now, if this right here or this channel, any of these channels will be higher or at the same plane with the RSSI as the main channel, then you would have interference. That's going to be one of the easiest ways for you to determine. So if it kind of looks like this, like it's stepping down, you should be pretty good. If it's higher or about the same power rating as the main channel, well, especially the ones that are about 25, 30 megahertz out, then you would have interference. So that's going to cause your CRCs, your adjacent channel, which is something we don't want. We covered a few items on the spectrum analyzer itself. Now it's time to actually use it. It is located under monitor tools and then spectrum analyzer. When you click on it, you're going to see this screen right here. So I'm going to go through some of these. So the channel scan time. This range is from 100 to 60,000 milliseconds. Okay. This is basically how long it's going to scan each channel. By default, the time is set to a thousand milliseconds. Now remember, this is per channel, so if you're going to set it to 60,000 milliseconds, it's going to scan each channel for that long, so the longer the time is, the longer it's going to take to scan the channel. The scan creation, this is a range from 1 to 1,000. This represents the number of times the scan will keep on going. Either you, you want to do it once, twice, three times, or whatever. By default, it's set to it one time. Max, you can do it up to a thousand times. All right, so we have the appropriate scan time, and then we also have the last time it was scanned. So after you made your changes, go ahead and click OK now for the actual scan itself. All you really do is just click Start. Now what's going to happen is this is going to drop the link, so you have to be very careful where you are if you are located on the local side, but you're remoted into the remote base station. It's going to be satellite or subscriber unit endpoint B radio or vice versa. You are going to drop the link now. It is going to come back eventually after the scan is done. So as right now as you can see it's kind of doing my scan. So I am on let's see here. I am currently on channel 6160. So if I look at the spectrum analyzer has it not reached that far because it's basically scanning all of the channels for right now. So I right now I could tell you that I'm up in the lower bands. I got some interference and it's going to keep on going and going. So at the end, this is just going to show you what into what signals are being used. Going back to where we talked before, if you are on a specific channel, you are kind of looking for that step down. 
if pretty much every channel is occupied, you have interference. There's just no doubt about it. Okay. Also, kind of depending on the RSSI the signal strength. So if you know what your signal strength is for a link, let's just say uh, 45 dBm or negative 45 dBm, if it kind of creeps up there, you know that this signal is almost at your power range. So now best you could do is see if you could kind of change the channel. Once again, this is going to keep on going. If I click next, it's going to scoot over to the remainder of the channels because I'm in channel 160. It's just basically scanning all the channels. So it has not reached me quite yet. But once again, this is it. You're going to notice it. Change the channel. Now, one thing you have to remember, and as we stated in the in the beginning, if you sense that you have interference and you're not quite sure you have to use a real spectrum analyzer this is just a quick look at what's out there a real spectrum analyzer is gonna help you out at each location and you're gonna have to go off by what what that tells you But once again this is just giving you a quick look a glimpse of what the radio sees and you would have to do this on either end if it's a quick bridge or at each specific point if it's a MP radio and then kind of pick the best channel from that. One thing I would like to add the way that the base station the satellite radios work. The base stations transmit while the satellites receive. So basically what this indicates is that if you are on a base station and you do the scan you will not see the satellite because really all it's doing is just sitting there and listening. Okay? Now, if you are on the satellite side, you will see the base station transmitting. So one thing that you could do, kind of food for thought, would be power down the base station, if possible, and then run the scan because that's going to tell you if you have interference on that particular channel. Once again, on the subscriber, it will see the base. When you do it on the base, it's not going to see the subscriber. You know, it's again, it's food for thought, but it will give you a better uh, understanding, a bigger picture of what the satellite actually sees rather than a false signal, because it is going to be the base station that the satellite's going to see. To learn more about Proxim Wireless and our solutions, please visit us at Proxim.com or follow us at Twitter at Proxim.